Oh, no way. If you've never seen Jason's place, that's why I'm back here again. Look at this, guys. This is incredible. Hey, Spike, come out here, huh? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Come here, pup. Come here, puppy. Come here. Nah, dude, you're the best. Guess where I am, people? It's been about a year. I like to come see Jason. Uh, good to see we, We're not hugging. No, we can't hug. Can't hug. Long distance hug. Come on, long distance hug. There, man hugs from long distance. So I'm hanging out again with Jason. Um, we're down in my in in the uh, Miami area, greater right. metropolitan yeah, area. Uh, man, he's done a lot of work to his house. Let's check in on some of his animals. We're gonna give you guys a tour. Uh, hanging around with us this is gonna be my wife Kate and Chandler's hanging out. So let's just. I, I just like to flow with you, man. Come on. Let's I love seeing yeah, what you got going on. Oh my god. My eyes. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Sorry, it was just raining, so I had them covered up, but we can take that cover off. Oh my god. No, this is perfect. Look at this, guys. Hun, what kind of tortoises are these? Uh, radiated? That's right. Yay. Yay. She I learned. Yeah, but you have you ever seen radiated like that? No. Oh my Isn't that god. incredible? I mean, Jason, oh, man, so cool. these are beautiful. Um, I just love seeing his radiata because they have the most incredible patterns. Um, this is more typically what we have at home, but supposedly my, you know, Kurt Harpsmeyer, yeah. uh, he says that th those baby low, you like me. You like that beard? I'm furrier than you. Ben. Um, basically, no um, he says that his, he'll throw sunburst out like that, uh -huh. uh, but I haven't seen any yet, so right. I don't know. But these are gorgeous, man. So, I think these mm -hmm. were this size yeah. when I was here last probably year. Probably last time. Yeah, so. Yeah, these are probably two of the, some of the bigger ones. Yeah, they're beautiful, man. And then I got one from the, some from the Turtle Conservancy. Oh, well. very cool. Over, there, over here. Got, yeah, Eric right on. Brock That's Eric Davies. Good. Yeah, yep. Eric Davies, so. uh, good old Tiger King director. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty interesting. Um, so, man, it's pretty nuts. Now, there's some news, though, that I wanted to, we were talking when you were walking yeah. in. Oh, okay. We see the large enclosures back. Yeah. You guys might remember the first time I visited with Jason, uh, he has prosimians, uh, proto uh, apes, if you yeah, will, pre, pre monkey, pre -monkey yes, the most least um, evolved, most primitive of all yeah. primates. So let's have a look. Yeah. I mean, I see them right here. I just yeah. love, I love what you've done with these. But you're telling me um, that you might be done with mammals. Is that Not true? Done. You know, you know, the zoning department has given me a lot of crap about the habitats. Oh man. And I, you know, my plan, like I said, was to tear all this stuff down. Now they built the new house and to build habitats that are right. I haven't seen my lemurs or primates, you know, in days or, you know, where are they? They're so big. Yep. And since that dream was crushed by big government, uh, basically, you know, these bureaucrat nitpickers. Yeah. You know, the, you know um, I've decided that, you know, I, there's a zoo in Texas that I'm placing my primates with. Okay. That these, this, these animals will be in, you know, in a habitat that will be like 200 by 200 with natural really? trees and habitats, you know. That's amazing. And I, you know, I, I've never dealt with these animals as pets. I don't sell them. Um, they're always been for conservation and educational purposes, but, uh, you know, they're going to go to an amazing, amazing facility that's going to be uh, even way better than I would ever have myself. So. You know, I'm having trouble with my Burmese python, yeah. and uh, what's the problem with that is, is that that's not an animal that's really in high demand at right. zoological institutions. Right. These animals yeah. are still, yeah. um, not that I'd say <clears throat> rare, but they're... They're well, kind of a marquee animal. People yeah, love to see them. They're amazing. Um, they're they're great at zoological facilities. It's like a turnstile animal. You gotta have your tiger, you gotta have your lion, you gotta have your lemur. Yeah. But the thing about rough lemurs in the United States is, you know, they're critically endangered and I think the founder stock was like eleven animals, a black and white rough lemur, something like that. Oh, you wow. know, way back in, you know, pre nineteen seventy three before uh, you know, that was all allowed to bring them in. And so the founder stock is so small that, you know, to maintain genetic variation within the species is very difficult. Okay. So myself included, the private facilities really are, you know, this was a surplus animal actually that I rescued. Wow. Um, but, you know, I do just to give, you know, to free up space at other facilities that, gotcha. but they very, Critically manage the genetic breeding. With right, it's like an is it an AZA it kind is. of stud book it's situation. A, it's a stud book species, <clears throat> and you know now unfortunately people you know buy these animals as pets, yeah, uh, no as an impulse buy, which is just horrible. Well, you and, said something very telling. Yeah, you said, yeah, "Listen, these yeah, are yeah. 
Yeah. These are children that never grow up and go to college. They never go away. And then my problem is you can't have a primate by themselves. Okay. So what happens is you rescue one, you have a companionship. You know, they're 15 years apart, that one passes away, you get another one for companionship because, you know, the number one form of environmental enrichment in captivity is a companion. Then all the other apparatuses and food and diet and hiding and puzzle feeders yeah. and all the other stuff comes in. But without having a companion animal, you know, so then you never, you know, the, it, it never stops. And, and something so, I, you know, just you say yeah, getting a new yeah, companion, yeah. is there always a possibility that they may not like each other? Oh, that's always a possibility. In fact, she just had a female that, that was, uh, I brought in as a companion animal for her that was only six months old. Wow. And then lemurs, most lemur societies are female dominant. Okay, so it's so, what happened is that young female became old enough, started challenging dominance with this female, and she's very laid back. She's a oh, very she's zen beautiful. lemur. Yeah. But one day I found a serious, you know, some pretty serious, you know, suture requirements. Sutures. Right, they'll mess you up. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's 16 stitches every time one touches you because that's how long their cervical vertebrae is. Oh, so what man. happens is the way a lemur bites you is they thrust a canine in and then they rip their head back. Okay. So all of my suit stitches, I mean, it's always been 16 and stitches. And you've had them? Oh, yeah, many times. Where's that? Where is, There's like, one here. Where, look There's at this one, one on my fingers. But if you look, they're all the same length. Oh, wow. And this length it matches the same length of their cervical vertebrae from their neck to their, to their, to their uh, you know, lumbar. Okay. And, uh, you know, but, right. uh, yeah, so they, they're going to go to an amazing facility. I got to be working with Persimian primates. You know, I try to do it on an academic level, not like a cool level. Yeah. I don't market them as pets. I don't market, you know, I very really show them online now. Uh, but you know, the bad problem is now people are buying them as pets. Right. Out impulse. And not only that, there's, a, there, there's black and white rough lemurs and there's red rough lemurs. Wow. And you see a lot of people what they're calling tricolored lemurs as a, uh -huh. as a new species. But really, it's a bunch of BS hybridization. Gotcha. And because you know, in the wild, that there is documentations of cohab, you know, of overlap in habitat where the, on occasion it happens, it's still a hybrid. And in captivity, you're dealing with an animal with low genetic diversification. Okay. Combine that with hybridization with a different species yeah. or subspecies, I should say. You know, you get these doofus-looking animals that aren't doing anything for, for conservation. Yeah. You know, so it's critical. That's one reason I think I told you before how much I hate the morph world. Right, right. You know, we I share got, that. Yeah, yeah, I got to have a candy cane, tangerine, pie ball, you know, uh, head for I can't this. Stand it. yeah. It's a bunch of garbage and it's anti conservation, is what it is. That's you so know, funny. it's like I'd rather you do absolutely nothing. You know, for me personally, you know, you're, you're purposely managing an animal not to be able to adapt to the right. future situations. Well, these aren't yeah. the only mammals yeah. that you still currently have, are they? Yeah, I have some bush babies, but unfortunately, they're going to be gonna asleep. See, they're yeah, gonna, they're going to you know, come back at like two in the morning when I feed them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and they're fine. They're you know, wait. They're, so you get up at two in the morning to feed? No, them? I don't go to bed until like two or three because I routinely feed the bush babies like around oh one, God. and they get a snack around nine just when they wake up, and then I get out of I give them their primary diet around one. That's incredible, man. You know, I mean, that's it's after their breakfast and their world. That's like know? being a mom, right, yeah. Kate? Like you yeah. got to feed them whenever, right? Whenever they need to eat. But people, Their want schedule. To, you know, people want animals to adapt to them. And that just doesn't work. They better adapt to them. You know? I always love coming here because, number one, he's creative. I love his, the way his house looks. May I enter the yeah, enclosure? Of um, and then the other cool thing is, He's got rocks and he's got a big machine. He's got that that uh, bobcat out there, or New Holland uh, skid steer, or whatever. Yeah, and uh, look at this, guys. I love just simple ideas. I love. I, you know what's funny is I get it geeked out over rock with bromeliads coming out of it, but then you focus on this, and then what about that art right there? So here's some of the adults. Uh, the look at. I love this. I love that. Coming over to say hello. That's Ziggy. Yeah, there's Ziggy. Okay, so these are some of the, the parents of the uh, babies we just saw. But guys, check out this habitat. Um, how many uh, radiata are in here? There's 4.8 adults in wow. here right now. That's so and, cool. And, uh, oh, you yeah. lunatic. You know, this, this dog one loves of the things attention. down here in South Florida, you gotta remember is, unless these tortoises come with dynamite, it's very difficult for them to nest. Oh, So wow. it's solid coral rock here. So what I had to do is I brought in 32 tons of beach sand. Get out of here, that's what you I did. This is an entire nesting area for them. And do they do they kind of gravitate every, to this they, area? Every one of them nests in here now, routinely. That makes it easy for you. It makes it easy for me. You know, not only that, it, you know, the eggs aren't dropping and, and hitting a pebble and cracking. I mean, 
mean, and they can build a nest, you know, within 30, 40 minutes versus hours, uh, uh, you know, looking for a spot out, you know, in the, in the dirt. Road. And, and he, um, Jason's about a hundred miles further south than I am. And so the climate, the, the climate rather does stay even warmer than yeah. it does at my house. Considerably, so, especially yeah. in the winter time. Right, which you know, is important. If you're five or 10 degrees cooler than me, that's like a whole difference in heaters and miles exactly. of electrical cords. Exactly. And, you know, bringing animals inside. Yeah. Really beautiful adults here, man. I uh, love their faces. Yeah. Again, uh, we talk about it all the time, I know. Yeah. But for those of you who just joined the channel, um, you know, one thing about the Radiateds is they're probably one of the most um, prolific yeah. and or easy to see endangered tortoise yeah, in the United absolutely. States. Absolutely. Yeah. They do really well in captive breeding programs. I mean, granted, you know, a lot of, you know, fertility can be low, but they're producing pretty rare, you know, regularly. You, I, I gotta stop you also. You love palms. What? This is a unique This palm. is some wackadoodle palm that came from Fairchild Garden Sale oh. when I, like 22 years ago, I paid $125 worth it because my girlfriend wanted it at the time. And it was that big, a Come little on. pot. It's something where I forgot the name of it. But it's it, beautiful. It's evil. Because it, it, look, it's even got like thorns on the inside of the leaves. Oh my you know, God. these spikes. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Those will mess you up. Yeah. See that, guys, right yeah. here? But it works as a. If you can come in on the seed pods, every bit of that is just like a brutal spanking right there. Yeah, no you thanks. You know, you bump into that, you're yeah. done. You can keep that. Uh, yeah. Holy smokes. Nature. Look at this trunk. <laughs> yeah. Look at that trunk. What are you protecting, dude? Yeah. Those seeds must taste good to some kind Somebody, of Somebody, yeah. But I love it, man. I just love yeah. I love the enclosure. They got plenty of grass to nibble on. One day I would love to have that aqua night, the aquascape or <laughs> something here, you know? Yeah. When I see the picture of your radiators walking down a pebbled beach into the drink, oh. I, I cry with jealousy, <laughs> okay? It's Dude. Like, because I think we both strive to try to make a habitat, not a cage, you know, so right. mimic natural behaviors, mimic natural environments, have hills, have shallows. You it know? works, man. Yeah. It really does work. Uh, this is beautiful. These are, you know, Jason's one of the guys that uh, once we became friendly, it was one of those situations where I was always just kind of thrilled on the way he does things. We do wind up, every video we do winds up being like a bro session. Yeah, pretty much. We're pretty hugging much. each other. I, know, exactly. I love you, man. No, I love you, man. <laughs> hey, like you're the true. best. No, you're the best. It's, it's so really true. ridiculous. But um, I'll show you. I'll tell you what. Let's head out front. Yeah. We're going to go catch up with some of the... Um, the big ones, the glops. Yeah. Wait, you have some hatchling glops. I have hatchlings. Let's start with the hatch, babies. We have some hatchlings. Let's right do now. that. Yeah. And we also have some eggs that are, you know, hopefully they could be pipping right now. Who knows? Oh my gosh. Okay, we should definitely show everyone that. So the cool thing about the glops, it's a project. It's the three J's, uh, tortoise, and uh, oh no way. So it's uh, I had it out of the, you know, over the shoulder because of all the rain. Yeah, that's Jim. What do you think, dude? I've How cool is that? It's small. It's so crazy. Baby. Isn't it nuts? You've yeah. never seen baby babies, right, hon? Oh, it's awesome. amazing that these little guys, they come out of the egg, uh, and when you guys, again, if you've never seen Jason's place, that's why I'm back here again. For some of you new followers, uh, when we go out front, it, you'll really just see how incredible it is when they start out this big and wind up into just it's, monsters. It's, I pinch myself every day with this reality, you know? It's... May I touch one? Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. This one looks very, very well, new. just came out of the incubator today. It has a soft belly. There it is. There it is. Yeah. I was just going to say this. So here's its little, uh, the yolk sac right there. And uh, what will happen, guys, is over the weeks, he feeds off that. And then that little yolk gets absorbed. And uh, it's still feeding them inside the shell for a little while. They Probably a couple of weeks before you see the meat, You know, meat, it's right? interesting that you bring that up. I always thought it was a couple of weeks afterwards. Okay. We had a young animal, it was about a year and a half old, that we took it to get... Uh, endoscopy okay you know and the veterinarian uh basically was in there looking and he discovered you know you could see it clear as day the remnants of the yolk sac still feeding with yolk plugged into the animal's stomach so it's like so how it's like long a after? year and a half later Dude, it's well, not it like makes a vestigial sense. you know yolk sac internally with yolk supplying even though the thing's eating it's like quadruple in size wow uh, it's just unbelievable. It's just another survival trait for these animals because, you know, food's not often plentiful. What they're eating isn't always the most nutritious Absolutely. food. So if you got the yolk, 
yeah. still pumping that yeah. mom's good, healthy yeah. vitamins into yeah. that animal. The, what's the key for a baby tortoise? Survival. Get until big you, quick. Pretty much, that's <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, because especially predators and get big. Right where these yeah. guys are from, they are actually yeah. you know you could get stepped on. But I would imagine their predation from birds is going to be yeah, something oh, yeah. that happens. Huge. Look at the beauty of you know, the even shells. Like rats, it could be. That's a big, right. You know, those birds, are and those rats, are feral in feral, their Feral, absolutely. So what's cool about this is that these are animals that um, are absolutely endangered. Any animal that comes from an island is going to be even more endangered uh, than, you know, cousins on, uh, you know, the mainland. And that's because any insular animal, nature could wipe them out. Uh, if, if that entire uh, island gets hit by a tsunami or some kind of calamity, a volcanic eruption, something like that, because yeah. we know the Galapagos Feral Islands are species, volcanic. species, weird vi virus, so, you know, who knows what. So volcanic, having, you know. having these animals, and you had these animals blood tested years ago with Dr. Funk, right? Yeah, we, well, not just Dr. Funk. We did University of Arizona, Yale University, and then the AZA uh, head genetic department at Ed, uh, Henry Zoo. Yeah. You know, yeah. so because all these animals, all of our adults are stud book registered now. Okay. Um, you know, there's quite a few studies we participate in. In fact, you know what's interesting? I just got contacted from the some head doctor, bio, plant biologist at University of Miami, and we're going to do a study with him for his thesis on Galapagos tortoise and Aldabra tortoise, giant tortoises, their ability for seed dispersal okay. in prehistoric species of palm trees. Go really? A little bit over my head right now, <laughs> but because he's talking about a Cuban palm tree and a Puerto Rican palm tree, and they said back like in the dinosaur days, there was other species of giant tortoises, and the seeds are almost impossible to germinate. Unless and they go unless through they the go digestive through system. Di so he has a theory that the that giant tortoises of the, you know, go, you know the ages were Definitely responsible for talk that. to Eric Good yeah. from the Turtle Conservancy yeah. Yeah. because I know, yeah. um, I, is it, where is that island? I know, um, Come on, Virgin, Virgin. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're talking about Necker Island. Necker, yeah. Nicobar Island. Or He's got Aldabras there. Right, yeah. so that, that's in the West Indies, yeah. and uh, maybe they can do uh, an yeah. experiment yeah. there. Yeah, he might you know? be into that, you know. He cool. just sent me pictures today of the different seeds. I was concerned about, you know, how many, the size, uh, impactation uh, issues, yeah. are there toxic properties to the seeds. Of course. So he just gave me all the lowdown. That's pretty they're, cool. They're See, we nerd, yeah. we go way nerd. Yeah. Yeah, we get it, right? It's yeah, hardcore nerd yeah, situation yeah. here. Yeah. The nerd tribe, except you're not so nerdy. But what? I'm getting into the nerd. Yeah, tribe. all right. She's a nerdette. She's a nerdette. All right, well, let's close this up and let's go show you guys. We'll finish off with some of those big beauties out front. Um, and my goodness, it's just a cool. Which way do you want to take us? Any way you want. We go through the house. We go around the house. Let's go around the house, man. I like it outside. See you guys. It's part of my mess over here. Yeah, no worries. I'll just I'll keep it away. I'll keep it on this mess on my face. The, uh, hiding me all my crap until I get my shed. Dude. Nah, it's no big deal, dude. Yeah. You are definitely not messy, man. I'm trying not to do it. No, you're doing good. See, I would love to have a machine like that. If I had a machine like that, you know how much work it's I could like do? It's 200 men working Yes, for it's yeah. incredible. That's awesome. All right, look at this uh, paddock. This is awesome. We're getting ready to expand this. We're hoping to go all the way around to the back of the property no as well. No way. On the side. Oh, um, and then we're getting sprinklers so I can grow grass back. Yes, you know, it's, lot, that's so hard The first so time you filmed it, it was like a foot and a half tall, which is awesome. Uh huh. Now I put grass seed like every, you know, two months. And, and it's gone. It's just a denude you know, thing so quick. It's just the energy, energy of having a couple thousand pounds of tortoise walking on it. You know? Wow, yeah. hello there, young lady. Beautiful. We got an Aldabra in here as well. Yep. Just like my Nostradamus. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. There's a male or a female? It's a male. It came from, it was donated from the University of Long Island, their natural history department. And they gave it to me as a female, but about three years ago. You saw it. She became a he. Yeah. So. It's amazing. Just like my it's guy. A very hip Aldabra. Yeah, just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just gender fluid. I, um, I named her Lucy, her. I can't stop calling her her, and her, his name is Lucy. Right. That's, That's so right. cool. I'm so dyslexic. Yeah, no worries, dude. This is awesome, man. So let me ask you this question here, mate. What's this little uh, alcove you've made? What's this little area? Is this a, ne a nesting area? This is actually nesting pit number one. Okay. Because like I mentioned with the radiata, unless they come with dynamite, they're not digging on solid core rock that we have down here. Okay. So when we started, before we brought the animals in, we had a backhoe come out here and basically dig like a four foot deep swimming pool around here. We filled it up with sand and 50-50 dirt. Same thing, we have pit one, pit two, pit three, pit four. Okay. And that's really where they go to nest. They're smart. 
They get very it. Very smart. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I believe that they have some type of like ultrasonic ground penetrating radar type of thing, you really? know, um, to find suitable nesting locations. You well, with the islands, egg. they're from a ro yeah. rocky volcano. But you know, if you watch it, they, I call it an egg walking behavior. So right around dusk, where most of them are looking for spots to bed down for the night, there's always a female doing an egg walk. Where do I lay my egg? And she's really busy. <laughs> yeah. She does a little stop here. Then she goes around. She might do four or five different test nests over the night. And But when they're out of the egg laying spots and they're out in the open area, we've had nests where we've basically the left foot was on a rock the size of an automobile and oh. the right rock was on a sand you know area that goes down to the center of the earth and they find it wow. and the way they do is they walk and they drop the, their whole body to the ground legs off the ground and they do a wiggle thing like that and i think that they're doing kind of the way elephants do that ultrasonic communication that they're Whoa. putting a vibe down because i'm telling you this is a solid rock here and they find these little fissures to start working at get out of here and then they get up and they walk away until it's perfect it's uh, they're very very picky this is incredible uh these these animals are just gorgeous i mean these are some large females um these are big females that's a gal too isn't it that's junior he's our really young, uh, youngest small. male we have oh, one male wait. that's really about uh wow. about 15 so he's got a ways to go okay spike this hasn't is... seen this yet so we gotta get spike out okay spike, i like these names yeah he's got some good names here for a sure a lot of them came with names so because we're keeping uh, we have records that go back sometimes 60 years with some of these guys so we kept the names look at this beautiful home they have it's heated in the winter and then he's got this smaller enclosure here just to make life easier just to kind yeah, of herd them if in i know the hurricane is coming kind of thing i can lock them in here two days or three days beforehand right. so when it's time to secure here them in their hut here comes spike hey spike come out here huh wow, have you ever I seen anything like that babe he's big. he's big he's so impressive i like him come on out check him out oh wow. gosh nope he's a big daddy he got is a a, neck tick, though. oh yeah i get no that's that's just um oh, yeah, that wasn't a, a tick i thought it was skin, got it. yeah we get ticks from time to time and the cool I thing really is i rarely get ticks on them because uh, they, i don't think they can bite them you know get through this but once in I a get while em. you get that yeah. giant one that yeah, looks like a godzilla ones. tick and then yeah, we get on. some juicy ticks from time to time but um yeah. you know what's neat is instead of birds picking them off yeah. we do yeah. so it happens in the wild and I but just, on occasion, I, I see down. birds on them now, you know. Oh, do you? That's awesome. Yeah, and even the green iguanas, I see them on top really? of Really? Come yeah. on, yeah. really? Here comes uh, Coffee, the young male I was telling you about. Oh, my gosh. And that's a 15-year-old male, you He's said? He's about 15 years old. Now, he looks like he has one on his neck. Um, oh, yeah, there is. I'll get it. I love it. But, yeah, he, uh, hey, buddy. he, I forgot his D. We did DNA. He is a very rare purebred. I forgot what really? island he's from. I, uh, I'm so bad with that. I have See, they get now. nice and fat, these ticks. No, don't eat the tick. Yeah. No, I'll give it to Jay. Yeah. Hey, you, yeah, you can eat it. Yeah, you can eat that. Um, you know, Sampa Scucci, our friend, yeah. has told me stories that he has seen Al Dabbers and Galops let a bird go underneath them yeah. and then drop. drop. It's been documented as U Miami as well. Wild, yeah. man. So they're yeah. and then they'll eat the bird. And then they eat the bird. And they Isn't have that funny? Like their rare occurrence of you know, you know animal protein. Yep. You know? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, he likes you, Kate. Let me get some shots of you and Spike, man. I may lose my wife to this tortoise. <laughs> this is awesome. Now, is he shy when it comes to the? He's a little shy, but if you get approached from the bottom of the neck, the throat area, they get more into it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think Darwin would like him. Yes, I know. He's <laughs> I mean, got look, that long tail. I mean, look at Coffee. Oh, wow. He's like, I mean, come over here and rub my neck now. I know. He's like, go look ahead, honey. Yeah. That's Darwin in your anger right now. Damn. He's jealous. Yeah, go from underneath. Once you start rubbing on him, it'll be a ham. There you go. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. But look at his head. It's completely different than the other ones. It's shorter, wider, um, and he has what we call dragon armor. Down here. Down there. And I always wonder whether that could be an identification of a subspecies because not all of them have it. If you look at some of the other ones, it's a very smooth overlapping scale right. versus this like very aggressive looking pointed. It's scale. almost like osteoderms actually. There's yeah. free floating yeah. bone. We were yeah. talking yeah. about osteoderms yeah. on Ziggy. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to mention sulcatas yeah. definitely have oh, them. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's really yeah. a cool thing that yeah. reptiles have developed yeah. uh, to kind of help them. Again, these guys are so powerful, they got to clamber over those lava yeah, rocks. And that's it. They actually yeah. travel quite a distance on yeah. their islands as well. Absolutely. Looking for new yeah. shoots to eat. Yep, absolutely. Isn't that awesome? Food is sparse. 
And then I'm sure you follow like the Galapagos tortoise nesting behavior study where they, you know, radio track like 10 females on Isabel Island, I think it is. And from outer space, they follow their movements what? going up and down the volcanoes looking for nesting areas and food mostly. That's amazing. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, shoot, man. I'm glad, Kate, I'm glad you came with me today. Me too. See, I do fun stuff all the time. You do. I get to hang out with really knowledgeable people. Chandler, I'm glad you came by. No, Chandler's been wanting to come back yeah. over. You guys met a while ago. It's an awesome place. Yeah, so just really cool, man. I had a good day. Um, I love getting to see you, buddy. I love it, man. Too bad there's COVID. I give him a man hug. I know. Um, but uh, listen, follow him. If you can find him on Facebook. I'm on there somewhere. He's on there. I'm not big into it, but I'm yeah. on there, yeah. Or you could just stop back in another year. I'll pop back over. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget Chandler's got a channel. You may yeah. have heard of it. Go on over and check out Chandler's channel. Uh, what's it called? Chandler's channel. Oh, there you go, man. All right, good stuff. And uh, thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. Channel's been growing nicely in the last few weeks. And I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you guys that are watching. I hope you enjoy it. See you later. I'll leave you with this handsome man.